Hey there, are you tired of the crashes and the glitches that occur in FL Studio when you're making music? If you are, here are 10 tips that will help you make it all go away or at least reduce it significantly. Let's get started. So the first tip is we'll go to our audio settings, come right here to options, audio settings, right? And the first thing you want to do is make sure you're using the proper sound driver and make sure it's installed. Now a couple of sound, um, external sound cards do not come with um, drivers, but some do, so make sure you check for your manufacturer if you're using maybe Focusrite on Windows or if you're using M Audio or other um, external audio devices, make sure you've installed the audio drivers. And you can then either use the audio drivers that are installed or you can use FL Studio ISO. And then when you click that, make sure you come right here again and select the proper inputs and outputs to further optimize it. All right. So that's the first thing you need to do when optimizing your FL Studio for better performance. So tip two is your buffer length in your audio settings. If you do not have a fast PC like I do, right? All you have to do is click your buffer length and then you can toggle between any of these, right? But if you are mixing, our advice should stick to maybe 1024 or um, 2048, 20, so that's 2048, right? But if you are making beats because you do not want so much lag between when you play your keys, that's if you use the MIDI keyboard and when you get audio into your uh, interface, so you, maybe you stick to maybe 512, or, 20, or 1024 but if you are mixing maybe 1024 to 2040 because mixing can make you use a lot of plugins sometimes and it can really cause glitches and even make your pc crash sometimes so always toggle between the um, buffer length to see which fits best for your pc specs and project you're currently working on so the third tip we start from this that says priority right here now if when i hover around this you can if you look at the top left corner of the screen you can see cpu priority given to the mixer right so now you want your CPU to allocate as much resources to your FL Studio, right? So you want it to be at the highest, all right? And also, I would recommend you stick to driver, right? If you are using FL Studio ISO or your um, native driver for your audio interface, okay? So make sure this is also, playback tracking is also set as audio drivers. And also, also make sure that this is selected, save overloads. This is super important. Now, for the fourth tip, if you use a multi-core processor, which most modern PCs do use, right? Make sure you click multi-thread generator processing and multi-thread mixer processing. What this does is it makes sure your VST, that's for multi-thread, make sure your VST splits its um, processor user across the several cores of your PC, right? And then for multi-thread mixer processing, it means the effects and the processes that goes on your mixer are also spread across um, your multi-cores for your CPU. This helps if you don't have a strong single core CPU performance, right? So this really helps make your workflow faster and smoother in FL Studio. And you also want to select Smart Disable and um, Align Thinklet as well. What Smart Disable does is that it automatically turns off any plugins you're not using at the moment. But it's, you don't have to worry when you render the sound, especially for reverb, it's going to render it full as, um, as it should sound, all right? So tip number five, if you don't have a powerful PC, right? You come to the general settings right here and you want to turn up animations. Now, mine it says make it pretty, right? But if you do not have enough PC resources, just simply come right here and, cl and click do not distract me. It's going to keep it really simple. There'll be no animations or any fancy designs in FL Studio. It's still going to look pretty much like FL Studio, but there'll be no animations running through FL Studio anymore. It's going to just look simple and straightforward. So this can also help a little bit in saving your CPU processes, all right? So the sixth tip I'm going to share with you is rendering your sounds or consolidating them. So right here, you can see my project right here. I have a lot of audio tracks going on. And that's because rendering your sounds into audio does help save a lot of CPU resources than using the plugins as they are. So right here, I still have a single plugin. Okay, you have two options. You can either consolidate it or you can render and replace. Now what consolidate does is that it's going to consolidate it, turn it to audio and also preserve the MIDI information with the VST. But the VST is going to be um, inactive, all right? But render simply just renders it and replaces it completely. Come right here and we'll come to consolidate this track. Then I'm going to say from track start, all right? Then it's going to come up with this window and I'm going to just simply click start. And this might take some time because I already have it running through the entire track. So it's going to take a little bit of time. I'm going to, I'm just going to consolidate it. I send it to an audio file while also preserving the MIDI data. All right, so you can see right here is the consolidated track. And this right here is the MIDI track. You can see it's not going to sound if I turn it off. So the VST is inactive. So this can also help save a little bit of space. And this is how the original sound is from the MIDI. So 
So the seven tip that will really help you save CPU resources and RAM is purging on news audio clip and removing unwanted or VSCs that you're no longer using in your project, all right? This really helps save your CPU resources by a lot. Come to tools, macros, then I'm going to click purge on used audio clip. So this is simply going to remove any audio clip that I'm not using. So it's going to take some time. Then it's going to take some of them out. And as well, you can come to, since I don't have any MIDI clip that I'm using here anymore, I can simply come right here to my meet my um, virtual instrument just select a couple of them right and i'm no longer using since i've rendered all their sounds i can just select them and then just come right here then come to remove um, selected or delete selected then it's all going to be gone and this can also really help save you a lot of pc resources as well so you can see my pc my project still remains intact so the eighth tip is turning on smart disable now before i show you how to do it what smart disable does is that it makes sure that your plugins that you're using, right, they are inactive when they are not in use. Let's say, for example, you can say this audio track, right, right here. So I have a couple of effects running through it. So anytime this particular audio track is not making any sound, FSU is going to automatically deactivate them so that it can save CPU resources. That is simply what Smart Disable does. So there are three ways you can actually disable this. So you come right here, Options, come to Audio Settings, make sure you select Smart Disable, all right? Then you come right here to Tools, come to Macros, then we'll also come right again, switch smart disable for all plugins. And then you can also go to the specific plugin, all right? So let's have to turn a smart disable on for this um, plugin that is Citrus. Anywhere Citrus is no longer playing, we need to come right here and just click smart disable. So anywhere Citrus stops playing, it's going to automatically turn Citrus off, even for your um, regular plugins as well. So if I come right here and I come to uh, Crochens so loaded on this log drum um, insert, all I have to do is come right here come here down here and say smart disable so anyway anywhere the log drum is no longer playing this particular plugin will be off so this helps save your cpu resources by a lot as well so the ninth tip i'm going to share with you is on your pc if you're using other background apps that are not necessary for you to use fl studio make sure you do close them so if you're on windows you can simply come to your task manager and it's going to show you a couple of apps on here if if there are apps that you're not using at the moment you can simply select them and turn them off so I can save some CPU resources as well. So the 10th tip I have to share with you is your PC power resources. Make sure that your PC is sent to high performance mode and make sure it's plugged in to make your PC run even more smoother and run on full power on processor because sometimes some laptops do automatically optimize your PC to run on power saving mode when it's not plugged in. So make sure it's plugged in and you're running on the highest performance for your PC. So also a bonus tip, which you can also count as tip 11 if you want to, is if you're in the market to get a PC for music production, make sure you get a modern PC with decent processing power. At least if you're using Windows, maybe call R5, or if you're using Mac, make sure the processor count is not less than at least 2 gigahertz, that's 2.0 gigahertz. You want 2 gigahertz or higher, preferably multi-cores as well. So you can run a lot of virtual instruments and the program as well to run even more smoothly. And you can use some RAM Maybe at least 8 to um, 16 gig of RAM should be fine for music production these days. So these are my tips I have to share with you. Let me know in the comment section if it helps and let me know which was most helpful to you. I remember Sir Classy. This is SC Toots. See you on the next tutorial. Cheers.